Whether you're just starting out or have been coding for years, if your setup isn't right, chances are you're losing hours of productivity, no matter how much experience you have. I learned this the hard way by ignoring certain settings, not knowing about useful extensions, or simply didn't bother to set things up properly. What I didn't realize back then is how much of a difference setting up your IDE can make. And now that I do, I can't imagine coding without it, because my productivity has improved massively. In this video, I'll share some of my favorite extensions and settings and show you how I've set up VS Code and Cursor. Of course, not everyone will agree with my preferences and that's completely fine because I think it's still better to adjust or install extensions that fit your own workflow. But if you're new to coding or just don't feel like figuring it all out to yourself, consider this video as a simple starting point. You can copy what you need and tweak it later. So let's dive into the video. Now, I'm mainly using Cursor instead of VS Code, but if you're using VS Code, that's totally fine. These tips apply to both, since Cursor is a fork of VS Code, basically. I will talk about why I switched to Cursor later on in the video. So we're starting off by making your IDE look a lot cooler than the default boring theme. I'm currently using the Monokai Pro theme, a filter machine. It's technically a paid theme, but you can use the free trial pretty much forever. I decided to buy it because I like supporting tools that make my life a lot easier. Funny enough, I still get the occasional reminder to pay, but since it keeps working anyway, I don't really mind. What I like about this theme is how clearly it highlights different elements in my code. For example, it's super easy to distinguish a div and a class name. I used to switch between a lot of different themes, but this one just makes everything more readable. So I've stuck with it for a while now. If this theme isn't your thing, or you're just curious to try others, I'll link the official VS Code Marketplace down below, and you can experiment with different themes and see which one feels best for you. Now this is one of my favorite extensions. When you're working on a project with lots of folders and different file types, I highly recommend Material Icon Theme. It gives your IDE a simple but powerful quality of life upgrade. Instead of every folder looking the same with just a chevron icon, each one gets a unique symbol based on its type. For example, a folder named Images turns green with a small image icon. If you name a folder Layout or Components, the icons automatically change as well. It's a small detail, but it makes navigating through your projects so much faster and more enjoyable which not only makes your IDE both look good, it's also good for productivity. So the next extension on the list is Prettier. It's one of the most popular and common extensions for every developer. Basically what it does is it formats your code in order to be consistent, which makes your code more readable. One of the newer extensions I started using is Indent Rainbow. It highlights your indentations with different colors, which makes it much easier to see where, for example, a diff opens and closes. You can fully customize the style, whether you prefer colored bars, lines or dots, but I personally just keep it on the default setting. This next one might be one of the most important extensions to install if you're working with JavaScript or other JavaScript based languages, and that's ESLint. What ESLint does is it checks your code for potential issues, like syntax errors, unused variables, or things that could cause problems later on. Basically, it acts as a second pair of eyes on your code. So if you're a beginner, this is incredibly helpful because it immediately points out mistakes and teaches you better coding practices along the way. But even for experienced developers, ESLint helps your code being consistent, clean and easier to maintain, especially when you're working in a team where everyone needs to follow the same coding style. This one's more of a personal preference, but it makes a huge difference in how smooth I work. It's autosave on focus change. When I'm building projects, I usually have a live preview of my site or app running. And with autosave turned on, uh, every time I switch from my editor to the browser, my changes are instantly saved and visible. Now, I've noticed that my other classmates keep this off and then they get confused when nothing seems to be updated and it's almost always because the file wasn't saved. Without autosave you have to hit command S or control S if you're on Windows every single time before you're checking your preview. Which I find really annoying because when I use fork for my version control of my code, if your files aren't saved your changes won't show up properly before committing or pushing the code. 
So I prefer to have autosave on focus change rather than just hitting command S every time. So the next thing is the minimap to make navigation through your code easier. There's a feature on the side called the minimap. It's basically a small preview of your entire file and it lets you jump around instantly. So let's say if you're working on a huge file and you need to scroll all the way down, instead you can just click on the minimap and get there right away. To improve this feature, however, make sure you have the mouse over enabled in the settings rather than scroll or none. This way it will only show when you hover your mouse over it. And secondly, I turned off render characters. This makes it display small color blocks instead of just plain text, which makes spotting errors a lot more easier. And also the text is so tiny, I don't think you will be able to read it anyways. So why did I choose cursor above VS Code? The main reason why I switched from VS Code to Cursor about 8 or 9 months ago was mainly because of the AI features. I can't really compare it to VS Code's Copilot today since I haven't used that in a while, but back then Cursor AI was miles ahead of Copilot. At the time Cursor also had some really useful AI tools built in like the Composer with Agent Mode and the Command K option to ask questions directly about your code. And on top of that, the ability to set rules for your AI was groundbreaking for me because that really gave me some control on how the AI would respond to me. Also, one of the biggest features for me was the tab completion where it would predict what you want to write. And honestly, 99 out of 100 times it was spot on, which sped up my coding experience by a lot. Now, whether you prefer cursor or VS Code is really personal preference, so I'd recommend trying both. But in my experience, Cursor is way ahead of VS Code when it comes to AI features. Uh, that said, I don't really use the Composer or Agent Mode anymore since I switched to Cloud Pro. And its Cloud Code feature is far more powerful than the Cursor AI itself. But I'll share more about that in another video. If you wish to know more about why I love software engineering or want to know more about what I struggled with when I started coding myself, I recommend you watch my other videos I recently uploaded and I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.